I have learned over many years of homeschooling my kids that reading lays a solid foundation in language arts. Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. I am back today with my friend, Nikki Truesdell. And if you guys were with us, I guess it's been probably about two years Mm -hmm. since you've been on the podcast, which I don't know why so long. We've actually tried a few times (laughs) to get you on. And between your schedule and my schedule, it's just not happened. And so I'm so glad we finally made it um, me too. <laughs> to, to record with each other. So I'm super excited to have you back with me, Nikki. Um, Nikki is a second generation homeschool mm-hmm. mom. Um, she's You've got five kids, right? Yes, right. five kids. Yeah. She's got five kiddos. How many grandbabies right now? One and one on the way. Oh, yay. Oh, that's yes. so exciting. I'm excited. So yeah, so much fun. Um, and she is also the author of the book, Anyone Can Homeschool. As a matter of fact, it's so funny because uh, it oftentimes I will see on different Facebook posts and things. I always say Facebook because I don't do the Instagram thing. But on Facebook, (laughs) which my girls say is for old people, people will ask about, you know, what's your favorite homeschool book or things like that. And I often see your book pop up as one of the most highly recommended books because it really covers everything and it answers the questions that people have about homeschooling and whether or not they can do that. So, so we've done a whole podcast episode on that. We'll link to that as well, but we're going to talk about some other fun homeschool things this week and bring some encouragement um, with Nikki. But before we do, I want to say thank you to our sponsor, CTC Math. If you guys are looking for a great online math program, visit ctcmath.com. You can try them out for free. Summertime is a great time to do that with your kids to see if it's a good fit for you for this upcoming year. Um, and just see if it works for you, ctcmath.com. Well, Nikki, welcome back to the podcast. Uh, for Thank those you. who, I, I introduced you a little bit, but for those who are not familiar with you, maybe tell us a little bit about you and your family. Okay, well, we live in Texas and um, I have one husband and five kids, as I said. Three of my kids have graduated from a lifetime of homeschooling. So I'm only homeschooling two now, which is kind of strange. And they are 12 and 15. So uh, it's very different. I've had to adjust many times to our lifestyle because, you know, five kids, four, three, two, it just, it's always a different ball game. Um, And I blog and uh, write and speak. And my husband works full time so that we can stay home and do this. And as the vet said, I also have one grandchild and a second one is on the way. So I'm learning how to be a grandmother, which is a a whole new ball game, but it's so much fun. So, um, yeah, that's what we're doing. Love it. I love it. You're a young grandma too. I love that you're, you're young. I think that (laughs) gives you maybe more energy to be able to keep up. It's so funny because you think of grandparents as like, you know, old gray haired, yeah, no, that is so often not the case. <laughs> I, I'm starting to get some gray, but it's not all, it's not 100% yet. But uh, energy, yes, definitely. When he's here, I'm more tired. When he goes yeah. home, I, I rest. <laughs> but it's so worth it. Yeah, so funny. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm pulling those grays into, you know, I, I my trick is I just cut them like at my scalp. <laughs> I refuse to pull them because That's of that funny. old wives tale that if you pull them, more will grow and So I think I have maybe, maybe eight or 10 grays, but my hair, your hair is blonde. So you probably can't see it as much. It may have dark brown hair. Yeah. I think mine's going to hide a little bit longer. (laughs) Yes, I'm sure. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, well, you know, with gray hair comes wisdom, right? And so (laughs) um, so you, you are one of those mamas who's got lots of wisdom to share when it comes to homeschooling. And you've done that through your book. um, And you do that oftentimes through I'm talking to people, speaking, uh, you know, being on different podcasts and stuff like that. So I'm excited to have you with us this week. I want to talk today and we're going to kind of dig in a little bit to some specific um, subjects of homeschooling because we usually talk about kind of the broad overall idea Mm -hmm. of homeschooling and parenting and discipleship and stuff. But I want to talk about language arts today. Um, And then throughout the rest of the week, we're going to talk a little bit about history. Um, We're going to talk about teaching multiple ages together. Um, but I want to kind of park with language arts and reading and what that looks like in homeschooling, because I think I I was actually just talking with my daughter this morning about this. We're looking forward to the next year and we're talking about what that's going to look like for us. And I said, one of the most important things is for you to be a good writer. Like just as Mm -hmm. a functioning adult, you have to know how to write well 
And one of the ways that you learn to write well is that you read good literature. So talk about language arts for a little bit and let's bring some encouragement as moms are planning for this next year. Sure. Well, like you said, it's so important for anyone, no matter what field or not (laughs) that they're going to go into when they graduate to be a communicator because um, even as a mom, if, if your daughters grow up to be stay-at-home moms, they still need to be able to communicate well, to advocate for their family, for their children, to spread the gospel. There's so many reasons to communicate well. And I always tell people, if you just read Facebook posts, you'll see how sadly uh, oh. unprepared people are just to communicate. And so if you read a post on Facebook that has no punctuation or awful grammar you can see how unpleasant it is to try to Mm -hmm. to try to make your way through that and if you've got something important to say you don't want to come across that way it is so important to be an excellent communicator and writing is preparation for communication in all forms and like you said reading is what prepares you for that and so i absolutely recommend getting your kids reading and writing and there's a very simple way to do both and um this I learned the hard way. Everything that I share with people, I usually learned through trial and error, (laughs) not because I had all this great wisdom, but because we had to try different things in our family. And so um, I have learned over many years of homeschooling my kids that reading lays a solid foundation in language arts. Mm -hmm. And piggyback on top of that is the ability to write. And you don't even have to be a great writer yourself to help your kids do this. And I know so many parents worry, well, I didn't get a great education or I was awful at this subject or that one. But let me just tell you, it doesn't matter because the resources available to us now are just so amazing. But you don't even need a lot of resources for this. You need some books and you need some paper and a pencil. Mm -hmm. And so the first thing I recommend is read lots of books, read them together, have your children read them on their own as soon as they're able Um, Be patient as they work their way up through harder levels. I've had kids learn to read all across the age spectrum from five to nine years old. So don't panic if they're slower to pick up reading. Just keep moving forward and it will happen. I so far, I have never met anyone who just never learned how to read. It's just that some kids take longer than others. Um, So keep reading. Uh, read aloud to your kids, even if they're teenagers. We still do this in our house. We still have a, a morning time where I read aloud to them because mm-hmm. uh, usually it's a historical fiction or something that we're studying. Uh, all of my kids listen to audiobooks, So that's a great way to get some more reading in, whether it's at bedtime or on road trips, or if you don't feel like reading aloud, you know, play out an audiobook for the whole family. And then, like I said, encourage your kids to read on their own at whatever level they can. What this does is helps them to hear and see the English language and to use it often. They learn words in context. They see proper grammar being used. They see correct spelling being used. And they're able to see and hear uh, all kinds of language, whether it's just straightforward nonfiction or if you're reading a fictional tale, you get to to get into character with different people and and see how different people, different ages, uh, different times in history, all different sorts of language happens. And it just broadens their horizon so much. And so the second thing that I encourage, and again, this is something you can do for free, is to copy a lot of words. Mm -hmm. And we call that copy work in homeschooling. Um, But it is exactly like it sounds. It's just copying anything down. Usually you want to copy something worthwhile, but as long as it's correct grammar and spelling and it's got some interesting vocabulary, anything goes, anything goes. So you can have your kids use a spiral notebook and a pencil and copy down words from a book they're reading, maybe a paragraph from The Hobbit or something from a nonfiction science book that they're enjoying. You can have them copy scripture. This is a great way to memorize, by the way, to memorize Mm -hmm. scripture is to copy it repetitively. Um, I have a friend that told me that this whole year, this was their first year homeschooling, and they had followed my advice to try copy work, and they copied jokes all year. So it was a fun little thing. But while they were having fun with the jokes, they were still practicing all of the different parts of language arts. Um, 
like I said, science books, history, poetry, uh, a great speech from history is a wonderful thing. Man, we've loved copying down some Winston Churchill speeches, even family history or song lyrics. So whatever is interesting is worth copying down. And if you have a very young child, let them do one sentence a day. If you have teenagers, give them a paragraph or two a day. Um, this can be a great way to practice print or cursive or typing. I have a son who's obsessed with typing, so he, he types his copy work. But what this allows them to do when you put together reading lots of books and copying lots of words gives them the ability to see and use spelling, grammar, vocabulary, punctuation, and all of it in context. So often we have worksheets and, um, you know, curriculum that gives them lots of exercises, but it's no matter how hard the curriculum tries, it's often hard for them to see it used in context, in normal right. life. And so reading the words and then copying the words just brings it all together. And if you use content that they're interested in, it's even more relevant to them. Yeah, I think that's so important, especially when it comes to vocabulary, because there are so many times where my girls will ask me, well, mom, what does this word mean? And I'm like, well, I can explain hmm. it to you. <laughs> but you know, and, and then you look up the definition and the definition will give you the actual definition of it. Yeah. But it is hard to understand it if you're not using it in its proper context. And so it's so much easier when you're like, okay, well, it is. here's how we would use it in a sentence, you know, and then you use it that way. And it really does because, I mean, just memorizing the definition of a word does not help you to always understand exactly how to use that word or what that word really actually means. And so, yeah, being able to write those, read those, it helps with their penmanship. I mean, so many, so many it benefits does. to that. We want to thank all of our sponsors for making this show possible. BJU Press Homeschool, CTC Math, Apologia, and IEW. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do this. Visit the show notes for links to these great companies and thank them for supporting the Schoolhouse Rock podcast. As I've homeschooled and as we've gotten into, you know, we just finished our 12th year of homeschooling. Congratulations. And I've realized, I know, gosh, only by the <laughs> grace of God, let me tell you. But I've realized that there's all this curriculum that gives you such specific ways of doing things. You know, you've mm -hmm. got spelling, you've got grammar, you've got vocabulary, you have all the things. Do you use a specific curriculum with your kids to teach them those things? Or how, because because we talked about using those things in, you know, in mm -hmm. context, learning things in context. Um, how have you changed or have you changed the way that you teach your kids those things? I have changed. Um, I grew up as a very natural speller. And so when I started seeing that my kids were not natural spellers, and some of them are and some of them aren't, mm -hmm. but in the beginning, I started thinking, what's wrong? Why isn't this working? Because I was a natural speller. So spelling lists and spelling curriculum were great. I, it didn't matter. But I think even without those, I would have been fine. And so I've learned over the years that when we were using spelling curriculum, and we tried many, um, it seemed like we were drilling a lot, but all the lists didn't matter because we were not using the words in their context. And the same thing with vocabulary. We used to try different vocabulary lists and word curriculum, all kinds of things to help. You know, you want your kids to have a lot of vocabulary. And sure. it seemed like we did a lot of work and it didn't really change anything. It didn't make them uh, better spellers or give them the ability to use more words. And so I realized that was a lot of struggle, a lot of expense, and, and the copy work was what really solidified it. And, and I have had kids do all sorts of different things because we've been homeschooling for 23 years. So my kids are very spread out, had a lot of time to change tactics and try new yeah. things. And this copy work, reading and copy work have been the thing that works for all of the kids that I tried. Mm. And so there's something about using whole sentences with words that matter to the sentence and, you know, fit the story they just work. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I know later in the week, we're going to talk about homeschooling multiple kids because you've done that a lot. Yes. <laughs> um, but I love that you talk about that because that is a really good way to not have to have, you know, five different spelling levels that and too. five different vocabulary books and stuff. I remember when Brooklyn was little, I mean, she was probably seven 
and we were living in California at the time and, and we had an, we were kind of under an umbrella school, um, not a mm-hmm. charter school, uh, but okay. an umbrella school that we, we, um, you know, had report cards and stuff and all that stuff. And so I, I felt like I needed to check all the boxes. And so one of the boxes mm-hmm. literally was vocabulary. And I just X'd it out. Cause I was like, well, we're not using a vocabulary curriculum. And, um, the lady who, who ran that umbrella school, she was an older, wiser mom who had homeschooled for a long time. And she looked at me, she said, do you talk to her each day? I said, yeah. She said, then you do vocabulary. And I said, oh, great. She said, vocabulary A. And I was like, oh, that's wonderful. Like it just took so much pressure off of me because we, again, this goes back to feeling like we need to do it the way that the traditional Mm -hmm. school does in the classroom where we have to check all the boxes. And so when we don't check those boxes, we feel like we're somehow failing our kids in their mm-hmm. academics. And so I, I that love that you're 23 years into feeling. this. Yeah, <laughs> it's scary. It is. And that's one of the things I talk about most often is don't feel like you have to do what the public school does. Yeah. Every time you start to do something, ask yourself, why am I choosing to do it this way? Hmm. Is it because that's what you only knew from public school? Or is it because you think this is right for your kids? You know, and there's right. not just one right way to do it. So think outside that public school. That's, that's just probably one of my most common messages. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I love that. Let's talk about reading. Cause you talked about the importance of reading good literature. Um, and I, I think most people know that. And it's funny because just today I told you, I was talking with my daughter and we were talking about reading good books mm-hmm. and she, she has a, um, she has some books that she wants to read. And so kind of what we do with her is I I'll she'll read a book that I want her to read, you know, that mm-hmm. she's, you know, maybe not so excited about, but isn't completely averse to. And then she'll read a book that she wants to read that I approve. And um, she said, well, does it really matter as long as I'm reading? And I said, absolutely. I said, it's like watching a movie. I mean, Mm -hmm. not all movies are created equal. You have really bad movies that will pour really bad junk into your brain Mm -hmm. and help form you who you are as a person. And books are the same way. I said, it really is important what kind of books you're reading and whether or not it's good for your soul. It doesn't have to be a Christian book necessarily, Mm -hmm. but is it good for your soul or is it going to somehow damage your psyche (laughs) by reading these books? So talk about books for a minute. Well, I, I'm pretty picky about books. Um, and so first of all, I'd like to say that you may have children that say they don't like to read. I have children that say that, but all of those kids have grown up to enjoy reading. And now all of my graduated children have their own book collections. They have their own Mm -hmm. home libraries and they have found what they love and they collect it. They purchase, they are always on the hunt for something new. And my daughter who is a mom now is already collecting books for her children to have their own library. So don't panic. This is something I see too much is panic. Oh, my child isn't reading well, or they don't love it. Mm and that's okay. Just keep doing it anyway. Um, And then choose things like you said, that are worthy of your time, worthy of your children's time and their brain space, because um, there's so much out there to read so much to choose from. And even like you said, with movies, there's great movies, and there's awful movies. And there's only so much time. So make sure that you give them quality books to read. Um, I have actually quite a few book lists on my website because people are always asking for recommendations for kids. And so yeah. I choose very carefully what I allow my kids to read. Um, and like I said, I still read aloud to them too. So yeah. often in our school day, I read aloud for about 30 minutes to an hour out of a book I chose. And then I will let them alternate their, their you know, reading to themselves, whether all my kids are different, but usually they get to pick what it is. Um, But sometimes depending on where we are in our history studies, I will say, now I'd like you to read this book. And so it might be a Mm -hmm. classic um, novel, or it might be a historical fiction. I've got two right now that prefer nonfiction. So I'm kind of scrambling. There's less of that, you know, there's just so much good, you know, novels and historical fiction, but um, hey, Try to fit your reading assignments to what your kids enjoy. You'll have kids that love fiction and you'll have kids that love nonfiction. So try to go with that and make it fun. Um, But don't don't hesitate to also expose them to something that they wouldn't have chosen because you never know. I read a book to my kids recently that I didn't care for that much. It it wasn't bad. It was just a story that was not my favorite, but they liked it a lot. I asked them and they said that was very interesting. So 
think outside, you know, broaden everybody's horizons, whether it's yours yeah. or your kids. So what makes a good book to you as you're, cause you said you really research the books that you recommend and that you read with your family. Mm -hmm. What is a good book? What do you look for in a good book? Uh, definitely something that does not give them uh, dark thoughts. You know, mm -hmm. in the world we live in, if you go to a, a public bookstore now, yeah. the options for kids are just disturbing, very disturbing. Yes. So many uh, dark stories, vampire stories. And yeah. um, I just walk down the aisle for middle schoolers and high schoolers. And I, I think there's not a book here that I would let my kids have. Yep. So I definitely love classics, mm -hmm. um, classic novels and um, clean historical fiction adventure stories are fun and so what i try to do is look up you know christian publisher for one thing that that kind of narrows it down right. like you said they're not all christian books but that's a good place to start um but just um, a story that's clean and uplifting and typically it's good if the bad guy loses you know although that's not the way the whole world works when you're reading for entertainment, it's kind of nice to have mm -hmm. a happy ending in a story. So as my kids get older, they will read stories where that's not always the case because then I am preparing them for the real world. But for entertainment, I want them to enjoy the story. I want them to feel like it was worth their time. Um, yeah. And I don't, for boys, I want them to read stories of um, men who are great heroes that they might want to pattern themselves after the mm -hmm. character qualities of the man. For my girls, I don't want, um, you know, feminism in any form. I don't right. want them to think that girls are stronger than men. You know, all of that stuff that you see in the culture today, it's so prevalent yeah. right. and it's hard to avoid. And so that's why older books are good. Um, the classics. And like I said about older, the older the book, the better it is, unless it's something that you, a, a publisher or an author that you've become familiar with. Ask mm -hmm. your friends what their kids are reading and look it up, get some information. There are a lot of good books out there for for families that want wholesome entertainment that, and you don't yeah. have to just get the dark, ugly stuff. Right, right. I love that you've got book lists on your uh, <laughs> website. So we will definitely link to those because okay. so many times I've gone on Pinterest and I'll, I'll look at their book list and I'm like, these are just garbage, you know, yeah. <laughs> and there, there are some good ones in there, but there are some books sometimes that I'm like, I would never read this to my child. Um, yeah. You know. Popular doesn't always make it good. <laughs> right. Right. No, no, it absolutely doesn't. So, so thank you for the work that you've put into making book lists for, yeah. um, for moms that, and dads just to make it easier for us to find good literature. Well, we are out of time, uh, but we're going to come back on Wednesday. We're going to talk more with Nikki. We're going to talk about history and making history fun uh, because that's such an important part of, of homeschooling and just becoming people, right? Um, as our Amen. kids are growing into adults, um, history is so important for them to know so that we don't repeat the bad parts of it <laughs> so, exactly and so that we right. can learn from people and, and know, um, you know, why, why have people been blessed in the past? What mm -hmm. things have they done right? Um, as well as what they've done wrong. So history is super fun, super important. And we're going to talk more about that. Nikki, where can people find out more about you, um, your website, and of course your book, Anyone Can Homeschool? Where can people find all those things? I blog at NikkiTruesdale.com. And so almost everything I talk about is also on the website. And my book is available there and, and also on Amazon. And I also am on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Okay. Sounds great. We'll put those links in the show notes. If you guys are watching this video on YouTube, would you like and subscribe to it and share this video or this podcast with a friend? We would greatly appreciate that. Have a great rest of your day and we'll see you back here on Wednesday. Bye. Education is discipleship. And this is something I didn't understand until I was probably three years into homeschooling. The Bible teaches us in Luke 640 that when a student is fully trained, he will be like his teacher. And as we look around the culture right now, uh, I think it begs the question, who is teaching our children? Who is teaching our children and what are they teaching our children? And to me, the benefit, the primary benefit of having my children home with me is I am able to impart my worldview to my children.